gonna be doing some things while you guys are coming in. I got, whoa. Sounds like my, my boy. All right, I got some housekeeping. Well, this is opening up. Let's see. All right, I can see myself on Twitch, but the chat is not in yet, so people are coming in. I'll be right back, I need some water. So good. My goodness. Okay. What's going on? There you are. Hey, Red is in the house. Good to see you. Good to see you. <clears throat> a lot going on today. I got a damn fine download. I'm so excited today. So, some great stuff going on. I have to do a little housekeeping while I'm here with you guys. Hello, hello, Ed. Okay. That is that. I forgot to edit this. Thing. So I'm editing my podcast while I've got you here, and be doing that in just one sec. So that's the outro. It's gonna go over here. It's gonna go there and put that in there. Boom! Oh, that's some some fun insights. I hope that will help you out. That is, and then it goes to this. Thanks so much for wow. listening to the Mind. So that's going to be interesting. I need to bring that down. I will work on that later. I will edit that later. But right now, I have to get out of this because I have to restart Audacity. That's the outro. That's in there. Okay, I don't need that. So I've got to put the intro and the outro before I save it because then I've got to turn Audacity off and turn it back on so I can do this one. Ben's in the house. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, we pop this at the beginning here. Pow. That's done, and that goes there. Let's see, that's the end. Time for some mind scrambling. Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Okay, wow, that is awful. That noise is awful. Okay, I will be editing that later. Let's take it down. Export as MP3, done deal. Do, 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 do. Bam, done. Okay, uh, for some reason on my phone, I can see the chat, but the little circle keeps going and going and going and going, so I don't know what's happening. I'm a little frightened. Do you understand me? I'm a little scared. I'm barely holding my fudge, mates. Anyway. Uh, that is one of my favorite lines from Buckaroo Banzai. I'm scared, Mr. President. I'm barely holding my fudge. <sighs> Cracks me up every damn time. Boy, that spot where that lady cut my hair, she really gouged me. Worst haircut I've ever had. Absolutely amazing. Uh, okay, so that is down. Okay, so let's quit Audacity. Did I save it in order? Save it in order. All right, there it is. Got it. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beauteous. Beauteous! That's a word people don't use enough. Which that is just simply beautiful. This is my boy's soccer ball, eh? Soccer ball, eh? Ah, ha, ha, ha. All right, let me see. Am I gonna have to start over? I don't know what's going on with my... I'll take that off there, there it is. That didn't change it. Huh. Okay, so you guys can hear me fine and see me fine, yes? It's all good. 
Shamu Shako, what's up? Well, I can only hope that everything works out just wonderfully in Peachy Kino. Uh, let me do one other thing back here. Gotta make sure I have some power. What's up, the power? Gotta do it, do it now. Give me the power, yeah. Do it. Get to the chopper. I'm plugging in the power now, y'all. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. Oh boy. All right, that may be a problem. I know, that's an earthquake. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're not back in Burbank. There's no earthquake. <laughs> not now, anyway. All right, there we go. Good deal. Luigi, a Luigi. Okay, Erendos. I love that you guys are here. This is awesome. An alternus dim quote. Shamu Shaku, I don't know one. Except maybe, I am alternus dim. Something like that. I think that's alternus, his voice. Something like that. Um, <clears throat> man, I just had a great uh, podcast. I mean, uh, it was a convention interview, but kind of a podcast, live stream, whatever it was. Uh, and I had a great divine download when he asked me a question. So I was just like, wow, okay. That makes sense. Uh, and I've been sabotaging myself for so long, and I was like, oh my god, I don't believe I, I never got that before. What up, Chris the Pooh? Good to see ya. Nice dude, nice dude, nice dude. I really like that. So, let me set some things up, because I want to make sure that I have what I need and enough good sound, because, man, some of my podcasts have not been the best sound. Nugget. Um, let's see, put some books. This will raise this up a little bit. This is the latest book I'm reading here, The Wisdom of Tea. Like an interesting book. Can you got it for me for Father's Day? Yeah, yeah. So I've got to get better. Oh boy. Oh my god, son of a This is annoying to the utmost degree. I can't even tell you. So I'll be sitting here talking to you guys like this. What's up, man? How you doing? So I've got to pop open Audacity again. Uh, the book is about the wisdom of tea. Uh, that's about as far as I've gotten. I uh, just started. Some uh, This lady, she has done the Japanese tea ceremony for like 25 years, and she says she's still learning uh, things, learning the intricacies of it. Which I understand completely because, you know, I've actually done talks on this. It's that, you know how you've done something for years and years and then suddenly you see a new way of, of doing it, whatever it is. And suddenly you're like, wow, if I had only known that all these years, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, I could have gone faster or done it better. But see, that's the power of coaching because other people have gone there and other people will tell you things that are like, oh, hey, I noticed you're doing it this way. Is there any other way of doing it? So one of the, um, one of the best uh, marketers of all time, Jay Abraham, he's called the you know, like multi-billion dollar man, right? He would train and he would say, um, he would tell people in his, in his trainings, he would look at a, a business. And let's say that business was making motorcycles. He would look at that business making motorcycles and he would say, okay, let's see how you do everything. Check it all out. And he'd say, okay. And then he would learn from other businesses doing other things. Let's say a, a farming uh, community that you know raises corn. He would read about that. Or another company that makes biscuits. He would read about that. And he would find things on these other things that are just out of nowhere that you could take and put to this one. And it'd be just amazing. 
And so that is the, the interesting thing of, of continual learning because there's always another way of doing something. And that's why, and it's on, off on a tangent, but that's one of the reasons why our educational system sucks so bad in the U.S. because it's been compartmentalized and it's this one thing fits all and it stifles creative thought and ingenuity. And that's bad. That's why Declan is not going there. Declan is going to entrepreneurial schools and uh, really creative learning schools. And we're going to train him a lot at home and online because we're going to be traveling all over the world. So he's going to be learning other uh, cultures, like up close and personal, which is going to be amazing, uh, which I wish I had done when I was a kid. But, you know, I didn't. I never traveled that much. I traveled across the U.S., but but a little bit, not a lot. It's not like traveling to learn other cultures. It was like, you know, I went from, you know, Oklahoma to Virginia. All right. I got to see D.C. a little bit. So I say D.C., Virginia, a little bit of Maryland, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Yeah. That's pretty much it when I was a kid until... I got older and started traveling. The first time I even left the country was my first marriage. Our uh, honeymoon was Australia. We did Sydney, M Sydney, Melbourne, Tasmania, and Auckland, New Zealand, and the Bay of Islands. So that was my first trip anywhere, you know, big time. And then it was over. I was like, oh my God, I'm going. Went to the UK and Ireland and Scotland and Canada, Montreal. Uh, New York, uh, went all over the freaking place, man. It was amazing. And uh, Japan and Seoul. Um, yeah, loved it. And then, let's see, Preposterous in Alternus Dim's. I don't remember Alternus Dim's voice that much. Preposterous or something like that. I think it was dark, right? Um, how long did I stay in Australia? Well, <laughs> I've been here eight times, so. Uh, that first time was like three weeks. Now it's been four months, and will probably be another two, maybe three. Um, depending on what I just heard, I'm hoping it will be three. I'm hoping we will be able to stay past September. That's that's my whole hope now. Uh, Anywho, that's it, man. I'm just having a good time. I'm getting ready to do my uh, podcast here in just like one minute. So. Thank you guys for coming. Everybody that's here, some of you guys, uh, I've got some mods here. So if you are here, obviously you know uh, what we're talking about. When I say um, I can't say anything for 30 minutes because you know I will be doing my podcast. So check, check, one, two, one, two. Let's talk about it. I'm going to be talking about blah, 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 That's pretty, pretty hot. That's pretty hot. Pretty hot, pretty hot, pretty hot, pretty hot, 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 pretty hot, pretty hot, pretty hot, hot, hot. Wow, that's as high as up as it'll go. And that that's uh turned down a little bit. Okay, that's not too bad. So when I'm talking, I'm gonna be I'll be a little more animated than that. There we go. Let's do this. How's this? Is this better? I think this is pretty good right there. Keeping it there. A little light, actually. Alright. I don't have a whole lot I can do because I keep changing my uh my tone and I'm up and down and all that so it's very exciting okay let me clear that out start over all right we're getting ready to go uh let's see okay bye okay you're heading out is Declan okay yes yes he had a bonk on his head uh it, you know like kids do they're gonna get a bonk on their head and we have been giving him um uh, we've got arnica and he's got his vitamins and all that we do everything holistic And, you know, kids will bonk their head. I did it too. Okay. Let me see. I, I am going to go freestyle on this one. It may not be a long podcast, but I'm just, I'm just winging it because I'm excited. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Mind Scrambler podcast. I am Spike Spencer, your host. And today I'm bringing you a special podcast. Uh, quick podcast from a divine download. Yes, that's right. I said divine download. Uh, you can call it a eureka moment. You can call it a holy crap. I didn't know that was there moment. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's what I had today. 
I was just being interviewed uh, on a great podcast. Well, it was really a convention stream, and we were talking all about, obviously, voice acting and, and things of that nature, and also about the podcast. And something he had asked me about information for people who want to be a voice actor. And so I said, obviously, as I always do, the second word in voice acting is acting, so therefore you need to go and get some training. However, it hit me that something I've been saying all these years has been affecting me negatively in the success arena. And I never thought about it until just now. It never really hit me. Because I haven't really said it a lot, but I used to say it all the time. And it was a self-fulfilling negative prophecy. It was my reticular activating system was going out and looking for it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'll get more deep into that as we go. But let me give you an outline. So as an actor for, well, 30 years, really 15 years, I haven't been on camera in over 15 years, but, uh, well, except for confessionals when I played Vinny. Vinny! It was Vinny! He's very great! Um, and it was, uh, that was a lot of fun, too. I hope we get to do more. One thing that I did as an actor and as a voice actor is audition. You audition incessantly. You can say, what do you do for a living? I audition. Well, I used to say, because I had kind of a dark sense of humor, I said, well, I get told no for a living. It's one of the hardest jobs in the world, right? It's like, ah, I get told no for a living. And I'm thinking, well, that's true because you're auditioning maybe a hundred times and you get the gig only once. And I didn't realize what I was doing. Some of you probably already see exactly what I was doing, but it literally just hit me about 30 minutes ago that I had been doing this all my life. And what I had been doing is I've been saying, I get told no for a living. I'm telling myself, I get told no. And it's like, wait a second. That doesn't make any sense in a couple of ways. One, if I say, I get told no for a living, then what do you think I'm going to find? What do you think I'm going to seek out? What do you think my subconscious mind is saying? My subconscious mind is saying, okay, I get told no for a living. Okay, that's what my subconscious mind has been saying all those years. And it's actually factually inaccurate if you think about it this way. So if I get told no for a living, what that means is I there's a lot of rejection. Well, if you're in sales, if you're in a business, then yeah, same thing. You get told no for a living, right? Wrong. You get told yes for a living. You get told no for a not living because that doesn't make you any money. The only thing that makes you money is when you get told yes, when you make a sale, when you get that gig. Whatever it is, you only make money on the yes. So I had been telling myself I get told no for a living when I should have been telling myself I get told yes for a living because that is factually accurate and it tells my subconscious I get told yes for a living okay you get told yes now here's the the interesting distinction if you're telling somebody I get told no for a living that's kind of a you know a dark thing you say yeah I get told yes for a living I go into that room now I'm thinking yeah I'm gonna get told yes my energy changes. I'm upright. I'm feeling good because I get told yes for a living. What's going to happen when I go in that room and audition? I get told yes. And if I don't get told no, fine. No big deal because I'm going in there thinking I'm going to get told yes because if it's not this one, it's going to be this one or this one. So there's a yes coming at me. And that's how I live. That's how I make my money. That's how I get paid. That's how salespeople get paid. And if you go in there thinking you're getting told no, you're bringing a darker energy into that room. Do you understand how powerful this is? And it's interesting because I didn't catch that for myself. This is what learning, Kaizen, constant and never-ending improvement is all about. A lot of the times, the biggest 
impediment to your own education is you, and you don't even realize your ignorance is standing in the way of what you want, what you know you can have. I came in and I told Kim this. I said, I just got one hell of a divine download, and I just reframed my entire past. And she said, what? And I told her all this. She goes, well, I am very excited to see what's going to be happening now because that is a big one. And I'm like, yes, it is. And it's odd that I didn't catch that in my life because here's the oddity. One of the reasons why I became a bank code personality trainer was because when Cherry, uh, Cherry Tree, that's her name, Cherry Tree, uh, and she's awesome. She is my mentor in the personality training, and she invented it. So in the personality training, one of the, the trainings that she did, she says, look, you, in order to get, well, anybody can finish this sentence. I say, in order to get more yeses, you have to get more what? And everyone would say, no's, of course. And that's what we've been told over and over. This is what the mind scrambler is all about, baby. We've been told this over and over and over. You need to get more yeses, you need to get more no's. That's crap. In order to get more yeses, you need to get more yeses. It makes sense. So much of the junk that is out there that we take for granted, we take as gospel or we just don't even think is in our head, is in our head. And it's complete hokum, bunkum, horse pucky. It's complete crap because it's not even factually accurate. So factually accurate is to get more yeses, what do you need to get? More yeses. Thank you, Sherry Tree. For me, it was, I have to reframe, I get told no for a living as, wait a minute, no, I get told yes for a living. That money comes from the yeses. My living, my paying my bills, feeding my family, all of that all comes from a yes. None of it, none, zero comes from a no. That is huge. Especially, especially, hey, you want to go to prom with me? Super. That's my tangents, baby. That's my tangents. I had a slur. I went with it. None of the old paradigms, the old things that I had been telling myself were true in that way. In that way, I was uh, being funny, you know, and that's what I guess I thought. I was like, I was being, I was being factually accurate. I was actually not. I was being completely factually inaccurate and people understood it. But I look back and said, what was the purpose of that? Am I trying to sell the struggle that I'm working hard, that I'm struggling, but I'm not making money? That's awful. That's not what I want. So I get told yes for a living. That is what I do. Boom. there. Now that you understand that, it's like, wait a minute, wow, this is a short-ass podcast. Um, but I can keep going on this, and I want to, because think about it this way. If you have been telling yourself something all your life, well, you have been telling yourself something all your life, because you are where you are right now because of the story that is playing in your head and the things that you have been telling yourself all this life. It can change in an instant. It can change at any moment. You, you have that choice, that power. You just have to realize that you're doing it. So much of this is not just subconscious. It's, it's I mean, well, all of it is subconscious, but it's also something you're not even realizing you're doing and you might be doing that so I'm gonna ask you if you're listening to this right now think about the things you tell yourself when somebody asks you a question so what do you do I get told no for a living oh crap that sucks <laughs> what a bummer that's hard where are you having troubles or challenges in your life that kind of unexplainable 
You're like, I don't understand why I'm not doing better. I see people doing exactly what I'm doing and they're doing better and they're doing exactly the same thing. So the only thing that's different between the action that you are taking and what they are doing is you, your energy, what the story you're telling yourself, which is leading to your energy, your frequency, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, ad infinitum. So I think that's an interesting thing to start looking at on the inside. Find out where you're telling yourself no. It may not be the exact word no, but find out where you are selling yourself short. Selling yourself short. So many people do it and we're taught in our, I don't know what, I wouldn't say it's not just America because I mean Australia tall poppy syndrome uh, in America you know it's like oh well we want to you want to be sure and be humble but people are uh, are mistaking self deprecation for humility it's like oh I'm gonna be humble so I'm gonna put myself down that's this is a whole, that's a whole other podcast right there I'm gonna write that freaking down because that's brilliant see see this is how it goes. We flow, we talk, we chit, we chat, and then we have these wonderful things that pop out. Uh, Self-deprecation for humility. Deprecation for humility. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm really going to get into that one later. But ask yourself right now, and ask yourself right now, where are you being self-deprecating? When somebody gives you a compliment, are you downplaying it? Um, where are you telling yourself something that is leading towards the very thing you don't want? The prime example, obviously, I get told no for a living. What is that leading to? Getting told no, right? So if you are telling yourself something that is leading towards something you don't want, you need to stop telling yourself that. I know it sounds simple, but have after, you know, 51 years on this planet and I just learned this thing. Well, I didn't just learn this thing, but this one thing that I just learned is inside of me. So it's a little tweak that I didn't realize was in there. It's like, after you've done a lot of personal growth and self-help and you get better and better at things and you learn more and more, the changes, you can get a lot of broad sweeping changes and clear things out. But then there's little other things and you're like, I don't, I still don't understand. Why am I not this? Or why is this not happening? Those are the little teeny tiny tweaks that you got to get in there with a freaking Q-tip covered in some goo to, to get that last little bit out of your psyche, out of your brain, out of your subconscious or whatever. So it's a constant and never ending um, work. And every now and then something like this clicks and you go, yes, yes, this makes so much sense. So ask yourself where in your life is something like this possibly happening? You really have to listen to the words that you are using. And one thing I would say for you to do is ask a friend. Ask a friend to listen to you. Like Kim is my sounding board. And I've given her permission to say, hey, you just said those words again. I just wanted to make you, um, you knowledgeable of that. And I'm like, oh, wow, I did. Let me reframe and state it again. And what I will do when I say something like that, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, in neurolinguistic programming, if you say something that you're like, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that, it's already in your psyche. It's already, it's already in your subconscious, right? And it's probably something you've been telling yourself for a very long time. And if you have been telling yourself this thing for a very long time, you say it without even thinking. When you start catching it, then you say, oh, I reject that. And then you state what it is you want. After a while, your subconscious mind goes, oh, he rejects that. This is what we mean. This is what we mean. This is what we mean. Uh, there's another way, and I forgot the book. It was a great book. Uh, and the gentleman would say something. He'd go, oh, I cancel, clear. He would say, cancel, clear. And that was his 
Because your mind is a computer, people. Your mind is a computer. You gotta figure that out. You gotta understand that. There are ways of fixing things. You say something wrong, whoop, cancel, clear. You know, or the, some guy got cancer. Oh, we reject that because all your subconscious mind hears, mm, got cancer, got cancer, got cancer. Reject, 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 cancel, clear. I am 100% healthy. Boom. That's the power of your mind. That's the power of being aware and on the path of Kaizen and personal growth. And it is very powerful, guys. It is very powerful. I got off on a tangent. I got lost on something. I was going to tell. <laughs> this is the thing. I just kind of go off and rock and roll with it. But okay, I remember. Ask your friends. Ask somebody to listen to you and tell you when you say these things. You can start by asking all your friends, uh, you know, five, pick five friends and say, hey guys, I'm doing some personal work and I wanted to check on my words, my verbiage. What do I say uh, from time to time that, that might be construed as negative? Like, oh yeah, you go, well, somebody says, how are you doing? You go, well, fair to Midland. Fair to Midland? What? That's what my dad would say. Fair to Midland. Or somebody would say, well, I ain't dead yet. I mean, those are not positive things. Those are not positive things. You have to understand what you are saying because you probably do it day in, day out, over and over again. If you do something day in, day out, over and over again, what is that called? A habit. If that habit is a negative thing and you do it over and over again, eventually it's going to wear its way into your subconscious or into who you are and affect your energy, your frequency, etc. Like water dripping, 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 dripping on a rock. It may take a long time, but it's going to start wearing that rock away. That's what's happening now. So instead of that happening down the road, I mean, it's like if you're eating something, if you know this is bad, like smoking a cigarette, if you smoke a cigarette and you're like, I'm okay, I'm okay for now, that's fine, I'm smoking. Five years down the road, I'm okay, not so much. 10 years down the road, I'm okay, you're really, really not. 15 years down the road, you're in trouble, my friend. 20 years down the road, you're dead. I mean, ridiculous stuff, right? Why? Because it adds up over time. Like with smoking, if you stop smoking, you do start healing right there and you will extend your life. My father smoked all his life until he gave it up and then, I mean, he, it probably bought him another 10 years, but it got him. It got my mom, it got my stepfather, it got my grandfather, it got them all. And it's like, oh my gosh, I have lung cancer. How did that happen? Uh, well, uh. Think about it. So if you do something over and over again every day, it's going to wear its way in. So being open to who you are and what you're saying and what you're thinking truly, truly matters. And I talk about this in every podcast, I guess, your reticular activating system. I mentioned it earlier. Your reticular activating system sees what you want to see. And you can guide it. You can give it directions and tell it what you want to see. If you want to see positive things in the world, you can see positive things. You want to see horrible things in the world, you will see horrible things in the world. That's the point. It is all up to you. And most people don't understand they have this power. They don't get it. They let life beat them down and tell them how it is. I don't. You don't have to. Life is how I say it is. I get told yes for a living. You get told yes for a living. Doesn't that make sense now? I mean, wow. It blew my mind, that little reframe. In order to get more yeses, you have to get more yeses. Not no's, yeses. I used to, well, in the dating world, this is a concept I had in, you know, food game. Some of you guys know I wrote food game, a man's ultimate recipe for dating success. So it was all about dating and relationships and how I did it. And it works. Um, and one of the things I said was, 
I'm okay with whatever happens on a date. That expectation, I didn't say, oh, she's not going to like me. Oh, this isn't going to work out. Oh, you don't want to go out with me, do you? I mean, how stupid would that be, right? So where are you asking yourself out on a date badly <laughs> in your life? Think about it. Because, uh, you know, side note on the dating side. So Kim is gorgeous, and she gets hit on all the time, as all gorgeous women do. And 99% of those men do it badly. Bad. Pathetic. I mean, just like, wow, you thought that sounded a lot better in your head before you said it, didn't it? Yeah. And that was, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. You're going in with the wrong ammunition. If you're going in with a no already locked and loaded when you pull the trigger, guess what's coming out? No! In some cases, machine gun style. No, 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 no. You have to, that was a fun analogy, wasn't it? You have to load your gun with yeses. And then you get yes, 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 yes. That's pretty awesome. So I think that's really, I mean, it was such an interesting download for me today. And I think one of the, the best parts of having downloads like that and being open in the personal growth space is that it, it excites me. You guys can tell I'm a little jazzed about this because I found something out about myself that has been a block. And I didn't realize it until literally 30 minutes ago. And it affected me for my entire career, 30 years, and I didn't even know it. Well, that shit shifted today. I get told yes for a living. I get told Y-A-S-S. -S. Do you want Spike Spencer in this thing? Yes! Yes! Why? Because it's the best damn choice. You want to coach with Spike Spencer? Yes! Why? Because he knows shit like this. <laughs> and he loves it. That's the point, guys. Mm. I'm just I'm excited I'm excited for you who's listening to this because the energy of a divine download that comes in for somebody else resonates with other people and this is going to resonate with somebody. It may be today while I'm doing it live, which is what is today? Today's like the 23rd of June in 2020, right? And I'm live from the Gold Coast of Australia. <coughs> Um, still stuck in the COVID thing uh, that's still going on. And that's okay. Because somebody can listen to this down the road. Somebody can listen to this a year from now and feel that thing and go, oh man, I do that to myself. Holy crap, I didn't realize it. Eureka, pow, done. And shift their life and their moments and their relationships right there. Because they've been going in with one, tie, one arm tied behind their back or a leg tied behind their back or their head ripped around backwards. I don't know. I, I'm losing the analogy there. But the point is, you're handicapped. You're stuck. I'm not talking handy challenged. You're handicapped. You can't do something. And it's inside. So this challenge is to get it back. Because if you lose a leg, can't really get that. You got to put a new one on. But with this one, if you lose something, you can find it and you can get it back. You can regrow that muscle. You can regrow that positive muscle inside of you and make a change. And it can happen very quickly. I know it's going to happen for me. I feel it already. The energy around me has shifted because of that one little bit. I'm like, holy moly, that's great. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about it for you guys because some of you are going to get this. Some of you are going to feel it and you're going to look into it. Like one of the, uh, a couple of the um, exercises I do inside the Reluctant Hero's Journey is, or anytime I'm coaching anybody, I say, hey, look at when you're saying I can't. Look at when you're saying but. Look at when you're telling yourself no. You have to listen and be cognizant. That, that, that it's happening. Once you are, it's like, whoa. Darkness cannot exist where there is light. If things are pitch black, one teeny tiny dot of light destroys it. 
because now it is not black. There is light. And that is the important part. Shed a little light on whatever it is that's holding you back. Say, hails yeah to that no. You switch it. Every time there's a no, it's a, oh, it's not a no. No, 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 hails yeah. And things will shift. And I love that. I think it's very exciting, guys. I really do. I think that in your life, if you take a second to examine what you are doing and who you are being, which most people don't, by the way, guys. Most people don't listen to podcasts on personal growth. Most people don't even look internally at all. Most people just roll with it and go, well, I'm living. How are you doing? I'm living. How are you doing? Keeping up. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. You know what? How are you doing? I am extraordinary. I am freaking awesome. That's how I'm doing. How are you? That energy changes completely. And I do that. One of my mentors, who was Tony Robbins, uh, Vice President of Marketing for 20 years, he said, I always say extraordinary. And people are like, wow, what's going on with you? Why are you so extraordinary? You know, it's like, because I am. It's an amazing day. I'm alive. You're alive. We're here right now. We are in the moment right now. You are listening to this podcast wherever you are right now. And I've just shared with you one of my divine downloads that now you can utilize. You can take that energy and run with it. You can share it with other people. You can do whatever you want with it. That's the power we have. And the power to find something that we can shift at any given time in your life, even when we're older, is amazing. And it's free. It's free. You just have to be open to it. So I'm going to close this down and just say, remember, in order to get more yeses in your life, you don't have to get more no's. You have to get more yeses. Focus on that. Instead of saying, I get told no for a living, which is factually inaccurate, you get told no, you don't make any money, therefore you don't make a living being told no. I get told yes for a living. I may audition a hundred times, but it's the yeses that pay me. So I get told yes for a living. And now, <laughs> I'm going to do it a whole lot more often. Yeah, and that feels good. So I'm going to leave you with that. Go out there. Get told yes. Stop self-deprecating yourself. Be extraordinary. And open yourself up to all the greatness that is inside of you. I know it's there because you're freaking born. You are miraculous. The fact that you're here is like, what, 4.3 trillion to 1. You're not a mistake. You are miraculous. Sadly, we just weren't put down here with a guidebook, per se. There's not a user's manual. So we're working it out as we go along. There's a lot that's been learned, and you can use it. So I leave you with that. Have a wonderful, extraordinary day. Reframe all the bad to the good and go out there and kick some booty. See you next time on the Mindscrabble Podcast. Bye-bye. There we go. So, hey guys, I'm back. That was the Mind Scrambler podcast. Uh, yes, I am uh, to export this as MP3. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see. Hells. Yeah, to the no. Oh, there we go. Questions? Anybody? Hells yeah to the no. That felt good, man. That felt awesome. I really enjoyed 
going over that with you guys. So I hope I hope you got some some good uh, good stuff out of it. Um, oh, yeah, man, that felt really flowy. I know there was a few ums and uhs and ers and ohs and ahs in there, but what an odd thing to come up with there, Shamu Shako, out of nowhere. Can I cook pancakes? Yes, I can. Although I have to do it gluten-free, which is a little more difficult because they're not as good. I haven't found a really good mix yet. Well, there is one, Trader Joe's pancakes. Those are pretty good <coughs> for gluten-free. Um, there we go. Make sure we get got it. Quitting Audacity now. Done. So I had my other podcast came out today. Uh, go check it out. Um, that one was... What did I, what did I release today? Uh, yeah, I released, Damn it, don't give me facts. My mind is made up. So that's pretty viable for today, I would say, for the way things are going. As you guys know, I've been trying to share um, the the COVID nineteen, the Tony Robbins uh, podcast, where he interviews like six doctors that are on the front lines and a Nobel Prize winner, and all this amazing information is there. And yet, I keep putting it out to people, and people are like, "I'm so scared. I'm so this. I'm so that. The numbers." Ah. I'm like, guys, here, listen to this. You'll understand why the numbers are what they are. You'll understand you don't have to be scared. You know how, you'll know you understand how to protect your family, but no, they would rather be in fear. And you know, another weird thing that I'm trying to figure out is, so everybody's like going, the numbers are opening, they're, they're going skyrocketing, oh my God, why? I don't know, because maybe thousands of people were in the streets for a couple of weeks, elbow to elbow, duh. Not saying the validity of it or not, but it's like, I'm sorry, that happened. Therefore, spike. Der. The the, co the cognitive dissonance on this is is, is mind-numbing. People are like, oh my god, I can't, I don't understand. It's so scary. Have you seen the news? Have you have you looked at the people everywhere all over the place being like, yeah, 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 yeah? I'm like, that's 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 probably why, guys. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm saying that's it. So why are you acting like an idiot? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, anyway, stay safe. Keep your masks, whatever it is. I mean, we're here in Australia. We don't need them. So because Australia is awesome. Uh, are we watching Ragnarok right now? No, I'm on my podcast right now. Uh, but as I said before, we are watching Civil War. Uh, Captain America Civil War. I think Ragnarok might be next. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one's next. I can find out, but I don't need to. It doesn't matter. Um, why I'm here? Still on here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're watching right now. Um, I don't. We've still got a lot of a lot of shows left, and I don't know what will come next. Because once we're done with the Marvel universe, then it's like okay, now what? Pixar universe? Still haven't seen Frozen two. There's that. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> that hurt. Yeah, I might have sprained something. Have I watched? Yeah, seen Doctor Strange many times. I know there's another one coming out. There was only one Doctor Strange, right? Yeah, but he was in the other movies. Okay, yeah. So there's another Doctor Strange coming out. I don't know when, but I know that's coming out. Love Doctor Strange. I think that's my that's Kim's favorite. I think she likes that. I'm well, Iron Man is her favorite. Then Doctor Strange. Yeah. I'm all about Iron Man too. Love Iron Man. She says, uh, Robert Downey Jr. I should be should be buds. I'm like, yeah, I agree. We should. Maybe someday we will. Uh, so I was always a fan of his, even from Weird Science. And from Back to School. And hey, all the stuff. I think he was on Saturday Night Live for a while, wasn't he? Back in the 80s and 90s. So, anyway, kitties, that's what's going on. In nine minutes, I'm going to lock this up.
So if you guys want to ask me any questions about what we had talked about today, great. Happy to talk to you about it. Um, not really talking about pancakes. Shamu Shaku. I'm looking at you, man. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where we are right now. Um, I have a big pot of chili that I've been working. Some of you guys saw me putting it together this morning. Actually, you saw me doing breakfast this morning. And then uh, I made chili. And then tonight I'll be baking the chicken. So, you know, that's what happens when all of your meat is going to go bad at the same time. <laughs> and you're like, I got to cook or freeze. So I'm just going to go ahead and cook. I got a lot of vegetables, man. I'm just going to cut the crap out of those vegetables and roast them up and throw the chicken on top, man, because I need it. Uh, yeah. That's all. So, well, if you guys aren't going to ask any questions, I'm going to go ahead and eat because I'm getting hungry. Hungry. And uh, I, yeah, thank you, Krista Poole. I, I, I had a good time with this one. I, I feel very good about this one. I hope uh, a lot of people will listen to it. This is one of my favorites because of my own, you know, personal, really deep connection with it. I was so surprised when I hit it and I just, I was like, ding, ding, ding. Oh my God, I've been doing this to myself all these years. Am I going to eat stir fry? I will always eat stir fry. Love stir fry. Chinese food. Oh, love it. Back to designing a giant Mac on request of a friend. Okay, well, you go do that then. Um... All right, then. I'm going to let you guys go. You guys have a fantastic, wonderful, amazing day. And uh, I will see you tomorrow right here. Same bad channel. Same bad time. And we'll talk about something else. Because tomorrow it won't be uh, the podcast. We'll just be hanging out. Can I draw even one? No. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Ah, still trying. Ah.